Here we are again ladies and gentlemen and once again Morfit rides again only on this occasion we're not riding we're reviewing and it's the Shark Evo 1 2 what a name for an helmet I mean come on I've had it now since the beginning of June and I've done several thousand miles on it now so I feel like I'm experienced enough with the helmet to be able to give an honest uh, review of an opinion of what I think about it I did the unboxing and I've also done a video on how to take the pin lock, uh, to take the uh, visor off and fit a pin lock. So I'm not going to do that because that's already in uh, my videos if you want to look back. They're right in June 12th, 12th I think. And I've done one and it has a Senna camera on as well as the pin lock. So if you look for Senna and pin lock on the shark helmet you'll find it. And all the information you'll need about the camera and the pin lock will be on that. Vic and John have asked me a couple of questions they want about the helmet. Um, one in particular was, will he be able to fit his uh, his camera? I think he wanted a ghost camera. I think he's got a ghost, and he's also got a communications uh, do for Bob thingamajig. And as you can see, I can fit my center camera on there, no problem. And I can the helmet. Chin guard does not interfere with that camera whatsoever. There's no interference whatsoever in that in that uh, camera, so you won't have a problem there. I don't think. Uh, I think it was Vic. Ask that question with John. Anyway, one of you. Um, clearly, when you come to stick your camera, your, your ghost, you'll not be able to put it on the top because of the chin guard. Clearly, both sides you have a. A good couple of inch to stick something on there that uh, light bar there you can see that come with a helmet and the stickers and the them stickers that one when a headlight hits it it flashes up like a bright light and you get several of them you can put them at the back the front and different parts I didn't like the rest of them so I've just put one either side of the helmet oh, well the camera's blocking the other one I agree when the camera weren't on it married it up so you can see so that's the it's called the uh, Evo 1 2 and it's a modular crash helmet and it's also um, got the pin lock as I say and it's got a maxi vision uh, visor that means it's, 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 it's maximum at the moment until they bring something new out and also the same with the sun visor, it is really, really easy to operate. I've got to say that with, with gloved hands. When I'm riding my bike, I have no problem finding that whatsoever. At the beginning, I, you know, I might have missed once or twice, but I can promise you, you'll not have no bother with that. There's loads of vision. The sun guard works perfect. Um, I believe they had the Evo, Evo line. This is a, the element that's followed on from the Evo line. And I think they've got up to Evo Line 3, then moved on to the Shark Evo, Shark Evo 1. They brought the like, there was some problem with the chin guard. And it was rubbing on the visor, I believe. Well, this is a Shark Evo 1 2, the next generation up from that. And I can assure you there's no problem uh, with that rubbing anywhere. Clears it, easily clears it. Not a problem whatsoever. I will come back to that chin bar later. Ventilation, you have a front chin vent and that does work. You've also got a vent underneath uh, that blows air into the visor to clear the visor. I haven't noticed a great deal in that. I don't feel anything coming over my face but it, it must work. My visor's never steamed up. Obviously I've got the pin lock in. You have two top vents and they do work. Not a bother with that. And when, they, when they're on the open, it actually says on the plastic, both sides, open. A lot of helmets don't, do you think? Is it in the open position? Is it not in the open position? Turn on, it close. Turn it so we can see it. On this one, it has it written on. It must be like an idiot's guide for me. Uh, open. So you do know when you go off your bike, you can have a quick glance and they are open. There's no external exhaust vent at all whatsoever. What you've got here is a spoiler, and unlike on my eye, the spoiler's fixed, it doesn't move anywhere, 
it's obviously there for a reason. They wouldn't have put it on if it didn't. Maybe for an airflow or whatever. Not so sure. Um, the rating for this shark helmet is four. Four stars. There is some um, uh, front face helmets that will get a five star. But the ones I've seen, the chin bar does not go over the way to the top. It sort of like hangs on the forehead. And a mate of mine has one of these. I can't remember the make. But he says it's quite heavy when he's walking about because you've got all the weight of the chin guard on there. This one's at the rear. And there is a couple more that do that, I believe. And that also makes it legal for you to ride in that open position. The ones that stand at the top, I think there might be some that's are legal that lock. Uh, but some of them aren't legal. It's something you've got to uh, be, be aware of uh, and be mindful of that. But this one is, you can ride with it open. The, as I say, it's got a, uh, a four star safety rating, which is good for an open face helmet. It has two shell sizes, that means a helmet itself is built in two. Oh, the reason why they brought the, the, this in for the Evil Line 1, 2, and 3, it has a smaller shell, smaller, so the helmet doesn't look as big on your noggin. It has two shell sizes, extra small, small and medium, medium being the biggest of those three shell sizes, which suits me, because obviously with the extra small having the same shell size, it must have more padding in, the small having a slightly less padding, the medium having the best padding, in my opinion, this is only my opinion, I'm no expert whatsoever, Obviously, people at Short know better, a million times better than me. I'm just giving you my opinion, what I think. The medium helmet having the correct amount of padding for the shell is my opinion. So that's only my opinion. And the same again with the, you get the large and the extra large is the next shell size up. Now, it only goes to the extra large. It doesn't go XXL. So, large and extra large or the two next is the next shell size up. Obviously the large has a more more padding in than the extra large to make the helmet a large fitting. And that goes for any helmet, a rye, HJC, any any helmet you can think of. Uh, Shaw, Nolan, whatever you want, they're all the same. Carlberg, check check the helmets and check how many shell sizes they make. And you need the one. In my opinion again, the medium is the best. Uh, helmet in that in that lineup. Obviously, if you need an extra small and a small, it wouldn't bother me. But I'm happy that the medium is the largest of those two. Inside the helmet, if you do, uh, you have a, also a wind guard under there. Brilliant bit of kit that, especially if you're on the uh, using a narration or talking to your mates over your uh, Bluetooth. It cuts all the wind noise out under there from your mic. However, there is a catch to that. You must remember to fold it before you open it. If you don't fold it before you open it, it gets stuck. It gets stuck on the visor. Be wary of that, especially when you're on the move. And to put it down and up, you really do need to be still uh, uh, stopped on the back with your feet on the floor. I can do it. I can find it, and you've probably seen me videos, I can do it. And you'll probably be able to do it. I'm nothing special, don't get me wrong. But it, it's fiddly. And, and, and it, it is fiddly, so you've got to be aware of that. Uh, what else can I tell you about it? It's ECE certified, that means you can ride on the road with it. Um, the, there is a thing, a note on this one. Before May 2017, this particular helmet, um, stuck again now. Look. This particular helmet, the chin guard that flicks up now has a 100% locked position safety rating. That means in all the crash tests they did, the chin guard stayed secure. It never, it never gave up from its locked position. A couple of other helmets are the same in this particular model, in this particular lineup, you know, the flip front. 
But around the 2017, there were uh, some of them only achieved a 33%, and that was the Evo 1, I believe, not the Evo 1 2. It was the Evo 1, and the production number that had this Dicky Chingard. I've got the number, so pencil this in, but it's the Evo 1 and not the Evo 1 2, so you should have a worry if you go for the Shark Evo 1 2. But the, but the safety number for the Evo 1 is 077099. So that's something to watch out for. Uh, what else can I tell you? Yeah, oh, the noise. No, I want to get on to the, to the noise part of it. When I first, when I put this out, when I got the camera for the helmet, uh, it shows you on the previous uh, video, the speakers inside, no, in the helmet itself there's holes cut already for your speakers, so anybody with a, a, a Bluetooth system, there's holes already in there for your two speakers to be fit in. Brilliant idea. But my speakers wouldn't fit, they're really tight to get in. Obviously they weren't made for the centre really tight they have gone in but they're tight they just protrude slightly so when I wear when I wear my helmet when I wear my helmet I wear the neck warmer and I'll show you how I put it on not pretty but it works for me and I have it up like that like a head scarf and I wear it like that both summer and winter and there is a reason, and I'm going to get to the reason. When I put the helmet on, I have the front face open. I pull the straps out of the side and pull it on. And it really is a good fit for me. And the earpieces are absolutely bang on where my ears are. And if I don't put the... Uh, neck warmer on like that, it curls because of the helmet, a, a snug fit the uh, helmet bends my ears down and it really does hurt after a, after a short while after a long while I'm in pain so it works for me so that's how I take the helmet on and off, I have it in the open position and that's how I wear the neck warmer when I've got it on now the reason I've told you that when I've come to the noise part of it, when I first got this helmet and wore it like that, with the speakers pressing onto my ears and the neck warmer, the noise was it was as quiet as me or I. I could honestly and or not say that, except for when the front chin guard were open, obviously it's a lot louder then the wind noise. I wasn't wearing earplugs at all, oh, that's the point. Because it was so snug, the earplugs I had were hurting my ears. So I, I've stopped wearing the earplugs. There's more on that because I've got. Uh, I'm going for a, a fitting for personalised earplugs that only fit in my ears, if you will. And I'll do a video re a review on them when I get them. But that's in the part line. It's not imminent. So when I had the neck warmer on and the snug helmet, the wind noise was minimal. Um, but one day I went out. It was a very warm day and I didn't fancy putting that over my head, so I left it down and I've got to say at this point the wind noise was, was bad. There's no point saying it weren't, it were bad, it weren't good. Uh, so all I can think of is this wearing my neck warmer and the speakers being as they are, that's the only thing I can think of is making the helmet so windproof for me. What I'm saying is it might not be for you uh, and I want to give an honest opinion of of the helmet. I wouldn't like anybody to spend any money on something I've uh, recommended. What? Recommended. I've got my assistant sprocket. <laughs> uh, recommended was the word I was looking for. And I wouldn't like anybody to spend their hard earned on something I'd recommended and not know the full facts of what, I, of what I'm telling you. So by wearing this and the speakers protruding ever so slightly, it makes the helmet for me very uh, noise proof. Inside the uh, the padding is, is excellent it really is good tackle uh, good stuff. Uh, the, the fastener 
It's not a D-ring, it's like the safety belt. And I've always had D-ring. All my eyes and everything else, I've always had a D-ring. And I weren't so sure when I bought this. I weren't so sure about this. But uh, to, to be honest with you, I prefer it to the D-ring now. <laughs> it really is a good bit of kit. Easy to fasten on. And when you want to take it off, you just pull that. It really is a good bit of kit. And, and to find it with the, all your... All your gear on round your neck and everything, your coat, is really, really easy. So that's a definite plus and a definite improvement on the D-ring, in my opinion. So far, so good. Let's, uh, yeah, we've gone through the ventilation, the visor we've talked about, um, the sun visor we've talked about, the chin guard we've talked about. Comfort and sizing we spoke about, there's different graphics. Uh, I, I got the, bl the black, clearly. <laughs> I got the black. You can get different colours and if I were to get another one, I'd get one with a bit of colour in it. Uh, I did consider selling my Arai, RX7 GP, you know, the brand new model, the top of the range model, to buy another one of these. Because I liked it that much. That's how much I liked it. I liked it over the array, and that, that's that's saying something for me. Because I've had a, I've, a, I've an array head. I've had loads of helmets through years. I've always gone back to array. I've bought helmets brand new, and uh, couldn't live with them, and lost pounds on them uh, due to not being able to live with them. This it fits my head perfect. My head is perfect. The medium size is absolutely perfect for me. I am a true medium. So anybody who's a true medium, the helmet will fit you, I feel sure. The paint quality, I'm, I'm really pleased with. The quality, you know, the, the quality of paint is, I haven't got no stone chips, I haven't got no marks on that whatsoever. It's amazed me, and I've worn it, what, June, July, August, September. And if you're watching my videos, you've seen how many miles I've done. Uh, and I've also been out when I haven't put videos on. So I've done thousands of miles in this helmet uh, with videos to back it up. And as I say, I've been out loads of times without the camera. I've done thousands of miles and I can assure you the, the mark on the helmet. Uh, there's, there's one of white and we all uh, like reds and, and, and blues, I think, in it. And I like that. But I nearly bought the white one and I was hovering over the button to buy the white one. And I just pressed black at the finish. Reason why I went for black is because it was cheaper. The white, the any other colour at the time were fifty quid dearer. I haven't checked the prices lately; they may have come down. As I say, the camera fit for me. You know, you shouldn't have a bother fitting your camera on the John or Vic. Uh, you've got quite a piece there. I don't know how much of a, a fastener you've got on the Ghost, but you've you know you've a, you've, you've two inch anyhow. To fit it on there, and you know, you speak, you speak a piece. Mine slips underneath, and then clamps on like a center. So you won't have a bother putting your mouth, uh, your, your Bluetooth thing on there. If that thing can fit on, your little Bluetooth uh, speaker thing can fit on. Right. So um, I can't think. Right. We've gone through all that, the paintwork, the quality, and every, the build quality and everything. I haven't got a problem with this build quality whatsoever. Nothing's broke, snapped, cracked, scratched, or chipped. You know, in the in the thousands of miles I've been riding. I will say this, and I'll put it up on the video. A couple of times when I've been riding, I've set off. I mean, shock. I advise you to be stationary at all times when you uh, flip the front or lift it to the back. They advise you to be stationary when you do that. So let's get that point out into the open before I tell you the next bit. Because I ride, as you've seen me, and I flick it up and down as I'm riding. You hear it click into that lock position. I'll do it again. It's locked. It's locked now. The Evo one you had to uh, stop to lock it, I believe. The Evo one two. It just was. You, you had to press. You had to press down either side on the Evo one. The Evo one two. You don't have to do that. It just goes into the lock position.
but when I've when I've been riding um, oh when I first got it there weren't a problem with this uh, locking and opening mechanism and then after a while I developed where, where it was stuck at the back and I was riding and trying to force it and I had to stop to fasten it in fact one night when I had sprocket on the back and I was trying to fasten it I was jerking about him and she, she actually took me with her helmet um, because I was messing about with this however I find the reason why maybe it's only my helmet or anybody out there who's maybe having the same bother if when I'm riding and, the, and I want to pull it over I get hold of the helmet obviously it's on my head so I'm going to put my other hand on my head on my other hand on my helmet you can't see what you're doing for your right. I'm going to put my other hand on my helmet because it's fastened on my head and I've got it fastened anyway so I need to hold it so when I'm riding now I get me even with my gloved hand I get my hand on the helmet and I pull it back ever so slightly just a mill or something like that and it folds over absolutely so easy so if your start sticking mine didn't at the beginning at first but it's developed this little where it sticks a bit there like now like you know but it don't you know sometimes it won't pull whatsoever but if i just pull it ever so much towards outwards towards me if you will one mil two mil you can feel it move i can feel it move you won't be able to see it because it's moving ever so slightly but it does come back a touch and then it just glides over so that's one to bear in mind and uh, about three or four times i pull it over now whether it's because i haven't got the front visor in the correct position it's stuck there <laughs> which which is a problem when you're riding as you can't see and i've got a video clip i'm going to include whatever in this. that is we'll have to pull in up here and i'll get shut of that whatever that is Oh, I don't know what's happened now. Oh, I can't see. And my helmet's got... <laughs> my helmet. I'll have to leave it like that for the time being until I can get to stop. I've done something to my lid. I don't know what it is. In a quarter of a mile, at the roundabout, take the first exit onto A65. I'll have to pull in here in a minute. It'll do, won't it? It'll do. I'll sort myself out here, Jeep. I don't know what I've done to my lid. Now they're going one there, isn't it, do they? Review of that actually happening. So I can prove that. You'll see it happen. As I say, it's only happened three or four times. But going back to what I'm saying, Shark recommend you not uh, moving when you uh, either open or shut it. You, you are, well, if you like me, you are going to do. But it doesn't detract from the helmet whatsoever. And would I buy another 100%? Yes, I would. There's nothing wrong with this helmet. It's a fantastic bit of kit for the money. Well built, well polished, well finished off. They've done a cracking job. If you can live with that bit of noise that you, you know you, you do get with a open fronted helmet, it's a cracking helmet. There's nothing at all. I cannot fault that helmet apart from what I've told you. That little bit where it sticks, maybe all the older that, or maybe it's just this helmet where I just pull it out a mill and it slides over. And the other time, the three or four times when it's got stuck in that position, <laughs> when I've had to peep out for that little gap till I pull up but you'll see that I'm going to put it on the video but again going back to what uh, repeating what sharks say you shouldn't be motionless when you move when you're moving when you're doing that uh, movement up and down you can get the uh, insides out really easy not a bother with that and you can put them back really easy it's really self-explanatory you won't have a worry my right has a lot more vents in that is this as uh, air flowing as the Arai. no it's not nowhere near but it's a third of the price of the Arai. do the vents work yes they do you know I've, I've worn them it's in summer and it's been uh, red hot and I've had them open everything on the helmet works 
Uh, I cannot fault it whatsoever. I can't think of anything else I forgot uh, to put into the review. If you have any questions on this element whatsoever, please get back to me. I'll answer you uh, to the best of my knowledge. Uh, I'm not related to shock. I've no contact with shock whatsoever. I am not getting paid by a shark. Let's make that quite clear. I've only got, well, when I say I've only, I am more than happy to announce I have 102 subscribers. <laughs> so I don't think Shark would <laughs> give anybody with 102 subscribers any large amount of money. That's what I'm saying. I am over the moon with my 102 subscribers. And take this opportunity whilst I'm on the video. Face, thank you all very much. It's much enjoyable and I love having you with, with me on my rides and Sprocket enjoys it as well <laughs> so I'd like to end this review by saying thanks for watching if I can help you in any way shape or form with any more advice on the helmet please do contact me and I will get back to it best I can I'll take this opportunity again I know I keep repeating it I am not computer literate I will do my best if I miss your comment, comment it's not through ignorance I really do appreciate you commenting and I appreciate all my 102 subscribers more than I can explain and it's not through ignorance I can assure you I will do my best to try and answer you um, if I can't answer you for whatever reason I'll answer you on something else when I'm riding but I will get back to you unless I've missed your uh, incidentally Vic uh, one of my subscribers he sent a message five days ago and it was only through my uh, loyal sprocket she happened to come across an old review my my first review my unboxing of this helmet and saw Vic's uh, question and it was only by a fluke that I saw uh, we find Vic's question nothing came up on my internet to tell me Vic had sent a question so it was by a fluke I answered him obviously but that uh, what I'm saying is I don't always get them so please don't be offended if I haven't got back to you I haven't got it the best way of doing it with me, my last video, whatever it might be, contact me through that and I will get back to you. I'll say once again, thank you all very much. Thanks for riding with more. Well, we haven't been riding, but uh, having a natter with us. Please do get back to me. Comment about the video, please do. And I will get back to you. And thank you very much. Morphe signing off. Adios. Adios, Eugene. Adios, Sprocket. Adios. Adios.